Hi, my name is Gina and I'm going to talk to you today about a disease called chronic granulomatose disease or commonly referred to as CGD. CGD is two different forms. There's an X-linked version and an autosomal form. The form I'm going to talk about is X-linked because that's what affects me. Um, if you remember in your biology class, boys have an X and a Y and girls have an X and an X. Um, so it's a disease that primarily affects boys and girls are carriers. In my case, being a girl with two X's, I'm a carrier, but due to some random deactivation in the X chromosomes, I actually present as a patient. So I live with the best of both worlds where I get to experience carrier issues and patient issues. <laughs> um, my first Ill real illness would have been when I was two years old. I had a pneumonia that was pretty serious. The doctors weren't sure what caused it. Um, eventually they found the right combination of medications to make it go away. And from then on out, my pediatrician treated me very aggressively, um, which is probably why I didn't have other serious illnesses growing up. Anytime a, a respiratory infection came on, I'd be put on some very heavy duty antibiotics. Uh, Growing up, I lived a normal life. I did all the things that uh, that maybe I shouldn't have done, like swim in lakes, <laughs> and I didn't get seriously ill, so that's good. And then when I was 23, I landed in the hospital for 27 days with a life-threatening pneumonia caused by B. Cepatia. Uh, for a while, they tried, I think they went through 20 different antibiotics trying to, to stop it. It went through one whole lung and two-thirds of the other lung before they did an open lung biopsy and figured out what the microbe was that was causing, causing the pneumonia. And at that point they said, why does a healthy 23 year old girl have this bug that normal people don't get sick with? And then we spent a week testing for all kinds of different immune issues and CGD is what came up. So I have some family history also where I have an uncle who died at 17 months old of a respiratory infection of unknown origin, and so we figure that he most likely had CGD as well. Um, through follow-up testing, we discovered that my normal percentage of cells that they test for CGD using the DHR or the NVT test is around 4%. In most carriers, you're going to see a bell curve type of response where you're going to have you know, 30 to 70 percent, and that's usually enough to keep you from getting infections. Down at 4 percent, I'm susceptible to the normal bacterial and fungal infections that are common with CGD. Um, in addition to that pneumonia, I've been struggling with pneumonia this year uh, for from December until April, so about five months. So I was in and out of the hospital twice for a week at a time. And uh, beyond those, I've had a cellulitis infection in my arm that landed my, me in the hospital and also an abscess that needed to be removed and that was caused by serratia. So a very fun and exciting health history there. Knowing that I had CGD before I was going to start a family was really helpful. I'm the first person to be diagnosed with it in my family. And uh, from there we found out that my mom is a carrier she is highly lionized the other way, so her X deactivated the other way, um, and she has 94% normal functioning cells. And my grandmother is highly lionized, like myself, with only 1% normal functioning cells. My sister is not a carrier, my brother does not have it, my surviving uncle does not have it, so I am it to pass it on. And knowing that my husband and I found out about pre-implantation genetic diagnosis when we were doing some of our family planning, um, we weren't looking for it, it just dropped in our lap. Somebody sent me an email saying, oh gosh, if I ever have kids again, I'm gonna do this. And I went, what is this? And started looking into it. So when we went to have kids, we decided to do that instead of just trying on our own naturally. So pre-implantation -genetic, pre genetic diagnosis is utilizes IVF so that you can test the embryos for a single cell defect like CGD. Um, they tested 13 embryos, only two of them didn't have the genes, so it was money well spent even though it was out of pocket and not covered by insurance. And now I have a healthy five-year-old son who does not have CGD and there's no one left in my family to pass that gene on. So I've eradicated it from my family, which feels pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, if anyone has questions about CGD, feel free to find me, uh, or PGD. 
beyond that, I'm, I'm mostly healthy. I mean, the, the hospitalizations this year kind of kicked me in the butt. Um, I, it had been 10 years since the life-threatening one that I had back when I was 23. And uh, it, it was, you know, I, I thought I was very healthy and I got sick anyway. I didn't do anything wrong. When I was 23, I got sick from the hot tub. Well, you're not supposed to go in hot tubs. I didn't know that. I wasn't diagnosed. Well, this time I didn't do anything wrong. I got sick anyway. And um, I think that that's one of the hardest things to struggle with, right? Um, you can you can take all your medications and you, you can avoid the things you're supposed to avoid and you can still get sick, but and, and that's life. I'm, sometimes things happen, right? So, um, and then I think it was a struggle this year too because it was so long. Um, I went through, like I said, five months of being sick. I had to take time off of work. Um, I kept relapsing and I kept wondering, <laughs> Am I going to be able to work? Am I going to be able to continue to have a normal life? Um, I know my family was very worried about me. My my husband would get angry if I worked too late because he wants me to rest and take care of myself. Um, so it, it causes struggle, you know, having a disease. But everybody has problems that they face in their life, and everyone's got their own burden to bear. And you learn how to deal with it and how to move on and, and continue to live life despite the disease instead of around the disease. So, for example, we're going on a great vacation this summer, halfway around the world, and uh, that's pretty exciting. And I asked my doctor about it, and she says everybody should travel. <laughs> so um, I'm healthier now, and I'm back at work, and things are going well. And I just want you to know if you're newly diagnosed, things can go well. And they can go well for a long time in between. And sometimes things don't go well and it's no one's fault. Sometimes things just happen. And you just have to keep a positive attitude and get through it. That's what my doctors always said to me in the hospital. They always said, well, you have a really positive attitude. I think that helps you in your recovery. So keep that positive attitude and uh, keep living life.